Have you ever seen one of these before? This is called Piano Anywhere. It's a carry-on piano and it does a bit of this. Let's find out exactly what it's like to open and play. Hey guys, it's Tim here and I'm back for another portable piano review. This time I thought I'd check out this. It's called Piano Anywhere. It's a carry-on piano with 88 keys and it folds up and I have no idea what it's like. I've never opened the box. Let's get in there, unbox it and have a bit of a play and see what it's like. Okay, so here it is. Looks very, very compact. I have to say, this is a really small package for an 88 key piano. Let's have a bit of a look at what it's like inside. Looks like Bronson's come to, come to play as well. All right, so look, before we open it up, let's just have a look at what else is in the box before Bronson jumps in. You gonna jump in? So you get a bag, just a calico kind of, almost like a shopping bag kind of bag. In here we also have uh, a pedal. Oh, it's one of those clicky ones again. We know that clicky pedals are not a very good thing because you don't want to be hearing this every moment you press the pedal, do you? So that's going to be interesting to try out anyway. Uh, and we have instructions by the looks of things, some notation guide, and a USB connector. All right, so let's actually unfold the piano. I'm quite excited by this actually. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not particularly heavy, so I'll be really interested to see what the action's like on it. Let's see how it actually looks. All right. So, here we go. Whoa. All right, get down, cap. There we go. I mean, that is, it's a huge instrument. It's a huge long instrument. Look at the size of that. All right, so first, uh, first, first uh, notes would be, um, yeah. It's a, bit, it's a bit clunky, quite noisy too. You can hear how noisy it is. I notice that you've got to push these things out of the way if you can, or how do they, I don't know how these things go down. I'm not sure if you can see that. I'll bring it up a bit closer. So you've got these little connectors that are, I don't know how, how to get rid of those. I'll probably find out uh, in the instructions if I read them. I also noticed that this key here, for example, seems to be a little bit, can you see it's moving up at the, the top end? So something's gone a bit funny with that key, I think. And this is straight new out of the box, by the way. All right, let's plug it in and see what it sounds like. So it comes with just a regular USB. So I'll just use my regular phone adapter. And the other end uh, is a smaller USB connector. I'm assuming it's gonna go in. Check my bits this end. Oh yeah, here it is. All right, and I'll show you the connectors that we've got at this end as well. So at the end we've got headphone, USB power, on off switch, and this I'm assuming is the pedal. Yes, it says pedal there. So we'll try out all those connections. All right, let's unfold it again. All right, pressing the power. I see something showing on the screen here. It says 001 right now. So I'm assuming that's probably gonna be a piano sound. So let's try it out. Well, look, I've got to say, it's um, it's pretty clunky. It feels very... The keys feel very plasticky to me, very cheap keyboard kind of feel. Um, oh, I just pressed down that key that was doing something funny and it's clicked into place. There's also a buzz coming from the speaker too. I'm not sure if the microphone can pick that up, but it doesn't sound so good. Marginally better than the roll-up piano, I'll give it that much. 
Uh, moving into the black keys, if you want to try and play in the black keys, so this is like an E flat major chord, that's actually quite, it's quite hard because the black keys are really quite short. I think it's about three quarters the length of, of a regular piano keyboard. You've certainly got a bit of depth, bit of travel, and you can feel a little bit of resistance as you play. So it's not completely uh, without an action. You know what, I think for, for beginners, or, or people that really just need something very simple and compact, I think this isn't too bad an option if you need something that, that definitely kind of folds up. Uh, I think for, for anyone trying any kind of uh, significant repertoire, uh, you're gonna have a lot of trouble getting into the keys enough to, to play. So that like that Chopin. You can hear just how how uh, rattly the keyboard is. Uh, let's try some different sounds anyway. I'll go to number two. So there's obviously, I don't know how many sounds there are in here. It'll probably tell me if I looked at the manual here. Uh, there's obviously quite a, quite a few sounds in there. There's some accompaniment patterns as well. There's a demo. I mean, the sounds are very much uh, kind of 1980s video game MIDI sounds. Uh, so if you're expecting a nice piano sound, uh, I think you'll be a little bit disappointed with that. Let's try the old uh, clicky pedal. So I'm putting that in a pedal plus spot. And just for testing, I'll just put it up here just to show you what's going on. I'll just go back to the regular piano. So. So it's definitely, uh, it's definitely sustaining the sound, okay? If I put it on the floor, I mean, between the clicking of the keys and the clicking of my foot on this pedal, I would go quite crazy if I wanted to do anything serious using the pedal. Uh, we've also got, uh, there's a volume control over here as well. That's maximum volume now. Rattling coming from the, the um, speaker up here. Let's turn the volume down a bit. I'll turn it to half volume. Yeah, playing in the black keys almost impossible. Uh, you're going to really struggle if you're if you're trying to do much that's in the black keys. Uh, there's there's not a lot of difference between the height, as you can see, of the black keys versus the height of the, the, the white keys. The difference here is it's only marginal. And of course you really need that difference if you're playing anything significant. So look, I think if you're a beginner, you're just sort of starting your note reading journey, maybe playing some simple chords in the left hand while you're playing along. I think it's probably okay. It's not gonna do anything good for your technique. It would be a last resort if you had to travel and you needed something super compact. I would definitely rank this above the roll-up piano that I reviewed, uh, but it's still got a long way to go uh, for being anything that's any kind of uh, accomplished or even a intermediate pianist would uh, enjoy playing or get value from playing. Okay, so I just had a look in the manual and you'll notice that there's these raised things here which are gonna get very annoying if you're trying to play on those white keys. But I have found that there are two latches either side and you can actually retract it and push it down so it is out of the way. So that's that's a good thing. It actually holds the keyboard much more firmly that way as well. So I can do that to this one too. And that's a nice easy way to do it. And now it's kind of reasonably steady now too.
could almost pick it up. Yeah, it's a pretty steady, steady construction. So when you want to fold it, pop those back out, lift these guys up in the middle, and then put on the Tina, hit the power button, and pop it in the bag, and away you go. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed my review of the Carry On Folding Piano. If you'd like more details about it, then you can find the links below to where to buy it uh, in the description here. And make sure you subscribe to my channel, hit that bell icon so you get notified next time I do an unboxing and review. And of course, make sure you check out my website at topmusic.co for more details for pianists and teachers about how to get better, more creative, and have more fun. Speak to you soon.